So the next generation of VR headsets has arrived and I've been testing these two, two of the main options, at least in Europe and the UK, and they are the Meta Quest 3 and the Pico 4. The Pico 4, I would say, was probably the first of this next generation of VR headsets to use certain technologies like pancake lenses and higher fidelity screens. And I've had this for about six months now. And the Quest 3, as we know, came out a couple of months ago and I've been using it since it came out and probably a sequel to the most popular VR headset ever, the Quest 2. And these two headsets are actually fairly similar in many respects, certainly in terms of hardware and specs. There are some very key differences and there are some key differences in terms of design as well, which may actually uh, lead you to choose one over the other. It's certainly not a cut and dry choice. And the Quest is quite a bit more expensive, at least $100 or £100 more expensive, depending on if there's any sales or not. But let me take you through what these headsets are like to use, what they're capable of, what kind of experiences you can have with them and if you're trying to choose between these two hopefully this video is gonna help you so let's go let's first take a look at how these headsets differ in terms of comfort in terms of the design of the headset the size the weight because unlike most consumer products this actually does really matter it's because you're gonna be wearing it on your head on your face and so the weight matters how the weight is balanced matters the size of the headset the kind of strap it comes with this is all very important because you want to be able to wear it for as long as possible without it being uncomfortable starting with the pico 4 which is actually one of the most comfortable headsets i've ever owned and i've owned quite a few now and this is primarily because of this built-in, very sturdy plastic head strap with a kind of counterweight at the back. You can see here, the battery for the Pico 4 is actually located here at the back. So when you put on the headset, it's kind of more balanced. It's not all the weight isn't at the front. It doesn't feel like is kind of pushing your head down, which many headsets, particularly, oh God, particularly wireless headsets suffer from this problem. And in general, it's just a quite a premium head strap to come directly with the uh, the headset itself. It comes in the box. You can adjust it very easily here by spinning this kind of dial around and it will either grip onto your head or you can loosen it. And then we have a strap here that goes over and you can obviously adjust that. But basically this kind of setup makes the Pico 4 very comfortable to wear. It's very light. It's very comfortable here. It's got a kind of cushion at the back. So yeah, I find it super comfortable to wear. I can watch an entire episode of something. I can basically wear it for a couple of hours really and not be too disturbed by it. So in terms of comfort and in terms of how it's designed the strap, it's really good. It's also pretty thin compared to the last generation of headsets. Uh, this is because of a new technology called pancake lenses, which are much smaller than previous technology that was used in headsets. So this means the next generation of headsets are pretty thin and slim, so that is definitely an advantage. The Pico 4 features a fully adjustable IPD, which is the distance between the lenses. And this is important for maximum comfort for most people, so getting the right distance between the eyes. You'll also find some fairly high quality speakers and a port for your own audio device, should you want to plug that in. Unfortunately, the Meta Quest 3 does not score as highly in the comfort department. In fact, this is its major, major downside. It ships with this very basic, flimsy strap, head strap you can see here. And obviously there is no counterweight, the battery is everything basically is at the front of the headset. So it's very kind of front heavy. Yeah, I just find it basically uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to wear. The Quest is slightly heavier than the Pico and that combined with the fact that, yeah, there's no um, kind of cushion here. There's no counterweight. It's just not a comfortable device to wear on your face for very long. And usually I get kind of red marks along my face, under my eyes. So yeah, I can't wear it for nearly as long as I would with a Pico. So if you are going to get the Quest uh, 3, then you would need to get one of the premium head straps, which is extra. There are plenty available. There's loads online, but yeah, just bear that in mind. Literally with this, I find it almost like impossible to use. But just like the Pico 4, the Quest does come with those new technology, the pancake lenses, which makes it very thin and lighter than the last version, but still doesn't make up for the fact that this strap is just so bad. The Quest 3 also has fully adjustable IPD and a port for your own headphones. Both the Quest 3 and the Pico 4 use two LCD screens to display the VR environments that you load up. And both similar a per eye screen resolution, but the Quest 3 is slightly higher, so it should be able to display slightly sharper imagery. 
In my experience, real life experience, this is pretty accurate. When I put on the Quest 3 and the Pico 4 and play the same game, I do find that the image is slightly sharper in the Quest 3. Everything is just a bit clearer a bit, and a bit more colorful, to be honest. So I'm not sure if there's a different kind of screen technology being used, but everything to me seems a bit more bold, a bit more colorful when using the Quest 3. But the difference isn't massive. Uh, I think it's noticeable, but it won't be like completely different, but you will notice a slight more sharpness in the Quest 3. And you can see here some through the lens comparisons where you may be able to see some slight differences in the screen tech used in both headsets. You may be able to see some difference in color and sharpness here. So overall, I find the Quest 3 to have the superior screen tech. Definitely everything looks a bit sharper and a bit more smooth. So in terms of that, the Quest 3 is definitely winning. Now, VR headsets are essentially gaming consoles. I mean, that is what most people are using them for right now. Obviously, you have the productivity. You can watch movies um, and VR experiences, like VR, VR videos and stuff, but mostly it's games at the moment. And like gaming consoles, their ability is mostly dependent on the tech inside the device. So... Both the Pico 4 and the Quest 3 are wireless headset, so they depend on a mobile processor to power the headset. The Quest 3 has a more advanced chip, a more advanced mobile processor powering it. It's the second generation version of what is inside the Pico 4, so it can load things quicker. I do find everything loads quicker. It can display more complicated textures, so as long as the game developer has kind of enabled that or used the power available, then the Quest 3 should be able to load more better looking games more complicated games and should be able to do it faster as well. The difference is uh, once again not going to be night and day, it's not going to be like the difference between a PS4 and a PS5, but now in terms of tracking and the controllers, which is very important, you want to be able to track as much of your body as possible and as accurately as possible so you don't get any lag in these VR experiences. Now, all uh, headsets from the past three or four years have used inside out tracking using cameras, which are inside the headset. As you can see here, the, the Quest 3 has six cameras inside the headset and the Pico 4 has four. So there is gonna be a difference there in terms of what can be tracked and how accurately, how much your body can move around before it loses tracking. Both headsets have RBG color cameras. One of the new advancements of this generation has bought. Now this allows you to see the world around you in color when using the pass through mode. This can also be used for mixed reality, which uh, we'll talk more about that later, but that is definitely a feature of one of these headsets more than the other. The color cameras in the Quest 3 are higher quality than the Pico 4, so you'll have higher quality pass-through experience. You don't necessarily have to use a controller, you can do hand tracking with both of these headsets, but I find in the Quest 3 the hand tracking is a lot more accurate. As for the controllers themselves, well, you can see there's quite a big difference here. This is the controller for the Quest 3, or one of them, and this is for the Pico. As you can see, this one is massive with this big ring, which I think is where one of the sensors to pick up, that the camera can pick up is located. So yeah, for me, the controllers of the Quest are a lot more comfortable to hold. Um, obviously much smaller, much less likely to get damaged. Using these big controllers, which was kind of last generation's tech with these big rings. It's very easy to break these if you happen to smash your hand against the wall, which trust me, you probably will at some point. So yeah, for me, the controllers in the Quest are, yeah, feel more next gen and feel more comfortable and just more compact. Now, regardless of how powerful a headset is or how good the screen is or how comfortable, it doesn't really matter that much. Well, it matters, but what matters most is the kind of experiences, the apps, the games, everything that's available for you to download. If there's not much available or if what's available is not that good, then it doesn't really matter how powerful the headset is. Now Meta with the Quest has a big advantage here because it's been around longer, the Quest has been around for quite some years now and they pumped a lot of money into it. Meta Quest Store definitely has a lot more games and experiences than the Pico Store. You'll find literally hundreds with more being added pretty much weekly. And you'll find the more most popular games like Beat Saber, Super Hot, um, Population One, there's loads of very, very popular games there which are full of players. And you'll also find larger and more complex games slowly being added to the Quest 3's roster. Games like Assassin's Creed and Asgard's Wrath are more like kind of full games, 
because for the past few years, or basically since the headsets came out, most of the popular games have been quite short, basic, arcadey games, but now with some increase in power, the Quest is able to play much larger games, so those are starting to come out as well. The Pico 4 does still have a fairly large library of games and experiences, but certainly enough to keep a single user happy, but there are definitely some very popular titles missing, and they're never gonna turn up there because there's some exclusivity going on. And you have to bear in mind that neither of these headsets can run the most complex VR games like um, Half-Life Alex and the Star Wars Squadrons, or or games that you find with the PSVR and the, uh, the the wired headsets that you have to plug in. However, bear in mind you can plug both of these headsets into a laptop that is VR ready and play these games. So in terms of software, the Quest 3, the Meta Store is way more developed, a lot larger, a lot more going on, and just a lot more to do. Now finally I want to talk about mixed reality because this is coming becoming a buzzword in the VR space, particularly since the launch of the Quest 3, which uh, Meta really pushed mixed reality as a part of the experience. Mixed reality in both of these headsets is possible because of the color pass-through which I mentioned, these color cameras, and it allows you to see the real world and superimpose some VR onto the real world. So again, it's mixing VR world and the real world. Now, as I mentioned, the color cameras in the Quest 3 are clearer and uh, display the environment way more clearly than in the Pico 4, which is very fuzzy and really not usable. There's not very many mixed reality experiences on the Pico 4 headset. So definitely the Quest 3 offers way more experiences and just a better experience. It's kind of like watching the world through a camera phone built in 2010 or something. So it's not super clear. It's still um, a work in progress. You can see what they're trying to do, but so far the Quest 3 launched with a quite a few mixed reality experiences and I found them to be fun, interesting. It's definitely interesting for people to experience them, but it's not amazing. I don't think we're there yet. I think it's gonna take another five or 10 years for it to really become a part of our lives. So having owned both of these headsets for a fairly uh, length, fair length of time, I do think there are, it is an obvious winner and it is the Quest 3. It is more advanced, slightly better tech in the, um, in the processor, the chip and the screen. There's also way more just experiences to have, to download, to try out more free experiences as well. Even in terms of videos and software productivity, most developers are making for the Quest 3 because many more people use the these, uh, headsets. However, it would be perfect if not for the really awful strap and just how uncomfortable it is to wear. So you really do need to buy an extra premium strap if you're going to use this for any length of time. And that makes the headset even more expensive and it was more expensive anyway. It's a fairly expensive headset. So in terms of price, it's not ideal. It's pretty expensive, but it is the better option. And I think going forward will become the better option. So that's it guys. That is my comparison between the Quest 3 and the Pico 4. Now, obviously I have my preference here with the Quest 3, but it really does come down to cost and also where you're located. Currently this is not available, the Pico 4 is not available in the USA. I mean you can import it and I'm sure there's there's some ways and means to get it working and stuff but yeah it is a very cheap headset for the technology that's in there. It's literally a, over a hundred dollars, a hundred pounds less uh, expensive than the Quest 3. So in terms of price yeah this is definitely better value but in terms of what's actually better the Quest 3 definitely wins. So that's it guys. I hope you found that useful if you are trying to choose between these headsets. I'll do some more videos on the Quest 3 soon. Um, I think about how we can use them for watching stuff. Are they, is it good for watching videos? and movies so that's going to be my next video on that so if you're interested please subscribe but until then i'll see you around bye